The Earth is not flat, no matter what you might see people saying on Twitter. And it turns out that it's pretty tricky to make the world flat. If you draw a map of the Earth on a flat sheet of paper, you're going to end up making some parts bigger or smaller or shaped wrong. It's like trying to flatten out an orange peel. You just can't do it. So when you create a map, or even when you decide which map you want to use, you have to make a choice. Which aspects of the world do you want to distort? You have lots of different options, depending on what you want to do with your map. The type of map called the Mercator Projection, for example, is famous because all its shapes are accurate. It's made by cutting the globe into wedges along the meridians, the lines that run between the North and South Poles, and then you flatten out those wedges. But once they're flattened, the tips of the wedges are no longer touching, and you're left with gaps in your map. So to fix this problem, you have to stretch the tips of the wedges horizontally. But if you've ever tried to stretch a photo in only one direction, you know that that seriously messes with the way things are shaped. To compensate, you have to stretch the tips of the wedges vertically, too. If you do it just right, then the map will have something called constant true direction. That means that if you draw a straight line between any two points on a Mercator map, it will give you the same direction a compass would in real life, a feature that's super useful for navigators. Which is why the Mercator projection's original purpose was to help navigators figure out where they were going. These days, the Mercator map projection is also popular among navigation apps like Google Maps or like websites like MapQuest. How old are you? You old enough for that? See, when you're trying to plot a route, it's really important to know which direction you're supposed to be aiming for. Plus, the Mercator map's stretching doesn't make too much of a difference over short distances. But the downside is that when you look at the map as a whole, the North and South Poles look much larger than they are in real life. Like, according to the Mercator map, Greenland looks about the same size as Africa, but Africa is actually eight times the size of Greenland. There are maps that show everything pretty much the right size, like Lambert's cylindrical projection, but you have to compromise a lot on shape. This type of map is made by placing the globe in an imaginary cylindrical tube of paper. Anything on the globe that lines up with the cylinder gets projected onto the paper. The biggest distortion happens at the poles, where you end up with a lot of horizontal stretching and some vertical squishing. But it all works out in the end. The map shrinks in the vertical direction just enough to compensate for the stretching in the horizontal direction. So the total area is actually preserved and everything is the right size. It's just shaped wrong. Other maps go for a nice compromise between shape and size. Like the Winkle Triple Projection, which is what National Geographic uses in their maps. This projection was developed by a German cartographer, Oswald Winkle, in 1921, and the triple in the map name is not a last name, it's just how you spell triple in German. It refers to the three things Winkle wanted to compromise between area, distance, and direction. To do that, he just averaged out two other map projections. One was the Eithoff Projection, which tries to minimize distortion by bending the latitude and longitude lines, turning the world into a big, curvy oval. The other was the equirectangular projection, which keeps the latitude and longitude lines very straight and spaced out evenly so the world becomes a rectangle. When Winkle combined these two projections, he ended up with a map that's rounded at the edges with slightly curved latitude and longitude lines. Because of the rounded edges, the poles don't need to be stretched out so much, and the curving of the latitude and the longitude lines help correct shape and size. It also adds a slightly spherical effect, which helps to show that the world isn't flat. And then there are some extra weird-looking projections out there. The Dimaxion projection basically reshapes the globe so that it looks like a 20-sided die, and then strategically cuts the die in places where there just is ocean and no continent. It's bad at navigation, though, because some things that are actually quite close to each other get separated by huge areas of not map. But because the Dimaxion ends up making the land look like one continuous strip, it helps show how interconnected the world's land really is, and it's sometimes used to plot early human migration. If you're looking for something that's truly accurate, though, then the best map of the world you can get is a globe. No matter how hard you try, you just cannot make the Earth flat. It'd be really nice if everybody agreed with that sentence. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow, which is brought to you by our patrons on Patreon. If you want to help support this show, you can go to patreon.com slash scishow. We will take your money and we will do our best to make good things with it that you will enjoy. Thank you for watching, and if you want more of this stuff, you can go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe. A big part of the manatee's body is pure guts, and they've got a very low metabolism. Although they look roly-poly,